Good afternoon, my name is Julian and you're watching Profit Audio. Today I'm going to be doing another episode of Serum from Scratch. I'm going to be showing you how to do different textures using range of oscillators within Serum. So let's get started. All right, so as you can see here, I've got three sounds. Let's check them out. The first one sounds like this. As you can see, this one's pretty tough. It's got a lot of character to it. This is number two. This sounds pretty cool as well. It's got a bit more of a sci-fi feel to it. And then texture three. Oh wow, uh, this last sound is pretty hectic as well. It's almost like it's glitching onto itself and having all these movements. So uh, I'm gonna be showing you guys how it's done. So texture one, let's open up Serum. All right, what do we have here? We have a sine wave and this wave called I can has kick, which is just in the digital right here, as you can see. So this first, this first sound literally has no effects on it. No filter, no noise, no nothing, just those two waves. And the main thing that's happening is the FM synthesis here. So we're using this oscillator to affect the first oscillator. So basically, if we hear it with that, it's just your normal sound wave. But as soon as we add this second oscillator in, it starts giving it a lot more grindness and texture to it without even doing much, actually. It's, it's this this option here, as you can see, FM from B. If we play with it, it sounds like this. It's almost like it's forcing this waveform to modulate the first sine wave we have here. This first sine wave also has um, seven on the unison. I've talked about this in previous videos. Let's check it out, actually. If we put on number one and on an F7, you can see it's, it really gives it movement by fluctuating it. I also put here the pitch value up a little bit. If you play with this, you can get some really interesting sounds. I usually just try and see if I can get anything interesting by pitching it up or down. So that's pretty much it. There's literally no LFOs, nothing else. That's the sound in itself. I've also set the wavetable position to be around here because when you first click on this I can has kick wave, it's actually completely flat. So you might look at it and be like, oh, this is, this is nothing. But trust me, this thing really works. All right, let's go to sound number two. This one is a little bit more complex. So what I've done here, I've again used the same FM synthesis technique with the two, those two waves, but this time I have put a noise with it. Pretty cool, huh? So, all right, let's talk about what's actually going on here. This first LFO, I've made this little sequence. Basically, I make the starting point and the end point be the same so that when it's going back on the first loop, so here I set it on four bars, so it's doing those four bars and coming back. By having it on the first and the same, in the same position, allows the loop to flow better instead of having to come back to a different position. It just flows back into itself. So this is affecting the cutoff. And I've put this formant filter in there. Formants really give such a cool vibe to, to certain sounds. Uh, let's hear it with that. It's almost like it's talking to us. <laughs> I think this is because of the way this filter is done. It allows certain frequencies to cut through and it moves those frequencies around. So this first LFO is, is what's moving it. Within the cutoff, we have a range that's not too big, but it's just allowing this subtle movement to be done. LFO2 is basically moving the noise oscillator and the filter. So the noise pitches up slowly over time. Then comes back to itself. Same for the formant option here. It starts from nothing and goes into it, then comes back slowly to its original position. I think this is an important step because it really gives 
that movement within it. LFO3 is the uh, FM synthesis. You know, this is a quicker rate because I want different movements to be affecting different parameters. That's how it sounds so complex because there's different layers of grooves within the one sound and there's different things going at different rates. And I think that's what allows the sound to sound so complex and have so much movement within it. So this FM LFO is just doing this. Let's see. As you can see, it's very subtle, but because the range of the FM can change so much that having uh, this little range allows like some of the characteristics of those extremes within the range to affect it slowly. So it doesn't have to be overly uh, psychedelic or overly distorted by the FM. Next up, we have some effects I put on. So there's one dimension. It's allowing the sound to feel a lot wider and it's almost like it allows the sound to breathe more. Next up, I've got this distortion. I feel like this really adds texture to it. It's almost like some of those high-end details come to life with it. Next up, an EQ. Here is more of a personal choice because I felt like there was so much over the frequency bands, like so much bass and so much of everything at once that I felt like um, if someone was to actually use this in a video game or a movie soundtrack or any effects that you may want to use this in, I felt like it's way more subtle when the bass is gone and some of those high ends are a bit attenuated. So if you guys want to experiment with this, you can set it to be, you know, more bassy or, or whatever. So it's, it's, it's up to you here. Next up, I also put a filter. Because I removed this bass and uh, all those frequencies before, this filter allowed me to boost some of those high frequencies and it's almost like I made um, all those frequencies sound tougher by adjusting the drive here. It's almost like gain staging the sound back to an appropriate uh, level. So I'm pretty happy with the sound. Next up, we can take a look at our last texture sound. This one is pretty crazy. It's almost like it's bending into itself and having all these different movements within it. Here we can see that I used a squelchy FM wave in the spectral section in Serum. And again, that I can has kick. That's usually a go-to if you want to make things sound pretty crazy. And it's a good way to do FM synthesis on different waves. So you just use this one. You don't even have to have it up. You can just put the volume down and have it be affecting the first oscillator. So here, as we can see, I have also um, a noise that's set on this one, the H breath. Using a noise is a great way to add an extra layer of high frequencies to your sounds. It's almost like this noise can blend with the other waves and add more details and movement within sounds. So here I used LFO2, it's set on two bars and it's pitching up and back down this noise. I also have this same LFO that's set on this ring mode filter I, I put on the sound. Basically, I'm allowing it to either spread up and then back down. I feel like the ring mode filter allows those sounds to stretch. The more you do the spread, the more it starts stretching and then ringing into itself. So you can really um, use this option to make sounds have a lot more interesting features to them. So here I set it up to up here. So it's not too much. It's literally like the range is just stretching it and it's going in the same motion as it is for the H breath. And next up, the LFO3, it's an interesting little graph I made here. I basically tried to have all these movements within the FM synthesis. The starting point and the end point be the same because it's almost like it's sequences of the sound going boom, 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 and it's like every time it comes back to this one bar, it's like almost giving it this aggressive feel to it, and that's what makes it feel like it's like really coming in and out of itself. The last step you gotta do 
is put all these effects. So these effects, again, give it life. And as always, I put a dimension on. So let's see without and with. If you want to make things wide and sound realistic, use the dimension effects within Serum. It's built in and it really works with a lot of sounds. So next up, I've got distortion set on Jod 1. I didn't do it too much, but it again will make some of the details of this sound come to life. How cool is that? Next up, I cut some of those low frequencies and some of those highs as well. I like to cut things that I know are not too necessary, so it allows more space within the mix. You would have this combined with other sounds, so this is an important step, but you know you don't have to do it. It's, it's really up to you and how your project and your sounds are blending in together. The high pass filter here with the drive up is going to push all those frequencies we cut just before and it's going to allow the sound to sound a lot fuller and stronger. Well, that's it for today, guys. Those were three texture sounds from scratch, from Serum. Please check out the channel for other content. We have different series on composition, how to use free softwares like Pro Tools first, and also free plugins for you guys to try out. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give the page a subscribe and share it around with your friends. I'll catch you guys next week for another episode of Serum from Scratch. Take care.